Local stories, local voices. We're localwebradio.fm. Welcome to Sound Investing with Byron Stryloff, Senior Investment Advisor at CIBC Wood Gundy and recognized by Vancouver Magazine in its selection of top wealth makers in Vancouver for 2013. And now, here's your host. Yes, this is your host, Eric Reynolds, and I'm here with Byron Stryloff, Senior Investment Advisor at CIBC Wood Gundy. And today, we'll be continuing our talk with Byron about demographics, including what birth rates have to do with economic trends how new technology affects the economy and inflation, and the growth of the economy. Now, before Byron joins us, just a reminder that if you have questions or require assistance, you can reach Byron at 604-535-3700. Again, that's 604-535-3700. Well, Byron, it is great to be talking with you again today. Yes, nice to be here. We've got so much to cover and this demographic study is so interesting. Let's just get straight into it. And let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Last week, we left off talking about the importance of birth rates. Now, what do they have to do with economic trends? Well, quite a bit, actually. So let me just summarize some of the key points uh, from last week before I, I launch into that question, just for maybe some of the new uh, listeners. Absolutely. Um, first of all, Every major trend that we have in our economy, whether it's earnings and spending, um, saving, borrowing, uh, inflation, productivity, um, the business cycle, in fact, every product and service industry is driven by predictable aging of new generations of consumers and workers. So through demographics, which is which is really just watching the predictable things that people do as they age, that's how we can forecast the large trends um, that drive the economy and the stock market years ahead. And, and, and that brings us to the, to the best leading indicator that we have found, which is birth rates. Now, why would birth rates be important? Well, simply, that's how we form new generations. I mean, people who consume in a predictable manner over the course of their lifetime drive our economy. It, it expands as new generations of consumers and workers move through a very predictable earning and spending cycle, and it peaks when the greatest number of consumers reach their peak spending years. So, so the, then the economy will decline until the next generation moves through its spending cycle. So again, it, it's that simple actually that you don't even have to be a PhD to understand this. Birth charts tell us decades in advance when new generations of consumers will move through predictable spending cycles. Hmm. So, so the, the truth of the economy is it actually moves up and down based on general demographic family spending cycles, and the higher the birth rate up front, the greater the prosperity as that generation grows up. Hmm. Now, do all generations basically have that same effect on the economy? Um, no, not, not at all, actually. Okay. Um, first, first of all, there's the size of the generation. Now, if, if you compare the baby boom generation to the last generation, which was the Bob Hope um, during the 50s and 60s, baby boomers are actually three times larger than our parents' generation. Oh, wow. But here's the interesting thing. If we factor in inflation, okay, and, and by that I mean the same profile. So people who have immigrated to this country that were born in the same years as, as, as our generation here, it actually works out to be five times larger. It, it, it's actually incredible. Hmm. And, 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 and that has given us a very different economy. And I don't mean different because of what they do, but because of the size. And, and because of their size, baby boomers create trends. In fact, their extreme numbers exaggerated all the economic trends that we've lived through. So if we just think about a few simple things, uh, when the baby boomers entered, entered school, uh, elementary schools in, in, in the 50s, 
there, there wasn't enough schools, so they had to build more of them. Um, when they were forming families and, of course, uh, wanted to buy their first home, there weren't enough starter homes, and, and that's what started that building boom, which <laughs> I don't think hardly ever stopped. And, and inflation is another uh, interesting thing. During the 70s, we had the highest inflation in history. And, and one of the reasons for that is that up until about age 19 to 22, that's when the generation on average starts entering the workforce. Well, until then, young people are basically a growing expense by parents and governments uh, to raise and educate them. I mean, <laughs> ask any parent, and they can tell you how expensive children are. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but as they enter the workforce, um, corporations train them, which costs money, they provide huge investments in, in offices and, and, and workspaces, uh, never mind tooling up for the, for the new technologies and, and the innovations that the new generations create and bring with them. So if you think about it, the first 19 to 22 years, we have, it's a period of high expense and high investment in these young people. And, and I guess the offset is that, thank God, they bring high innovation with them. You know, that's where, you know, the computers and the cell phones all came from. So, so as a result, during the 70s, it was a period of low earnings, low productivity, um, certainly low spending, and that's what causes inflation. Inflation is really the economy investing ahead of time, putting up massive investments into training a new generation and retooling with their new technology. And, and, and that's the first phase, which is expensive and a downturn in the economy. But then that sets us up for the second phase, which become rising earnings, like once they're trained and start becoming productive, and, and of course every year they become more productive, we'll, we receive rising earnings uh, uh, and, and more spending as this investment in new technology and training starts paying off in rising productivity that will almost go in a straight line upwards hmm. into age 47 and plateau around you know, the, the, the age 47 to 51, 52 uh, area. Now, that is a lot of information from one chart, Byron. Does every new generation create technology and cause inflation? Um, the shorter answer is no. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, every other generation, as, and as documented by a lot of academics, um, one is individualistic and more change-oriented, and then every other generation brings or introduces um, radical new technology, which you could read as disruptive new technology, and new social trends. So, so that tends to create a whole new economy. Um, and, and the generation that follows are more conformist and collective-oriented, like the Bob Hope generation. So if we take a look, if we go back again to the start of the, the, uh, of the century, we take a look at Henry Ford generation, which was very entrepreneurial. They brought with them and introduced a lot of new technology into the system. And, and, and as an example, some of them would be things like, well, the electric motors, the telephone, automobiles, movies, um, planes, oh, and the light bulb, of course, which is very important. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so, so this is new technology that starts, that is responsible for creating a boom. I mean, after this technology enters the economy, we have huge productivity increases that drive and did drive the economy into the roaring 20s, which ended in about 1929 when they reached their uh, peak spending. The, and the next generation's innovations, they they aren't as radical, they're much more incremental. So the Bob Hope generation would take that car and they improved it. So you've got your Model T Ford and they developed and added things like power steering, power brakes, automatic transmission. Hmm. Uh, they built a freeway system uh, you know, for those cars to travel on. Um, if you look at planes, the Bob Hope generation in the 50s developed a jet engine. Well, Byron, that's an amazing study on the information, the demographics, but right now we're up against the clock, so let's take a break here, and we'll be right back with Byron Stryloff, Senior Investment Advisor at CIBC Wood Gundy 
And when we return, we'll be discussing the economy and future economic growth. We'll be right back. More sound investing with Byron Stryloff, Senior Investment Advisor at CIBC Wood Gundy, after this. Buying or selling a home on the Semiamu Peninsula? Catch up on local market conditions on This Week in Real Estate with Lance and Connie Marples from Sutton West Coast Realty on localwebradio.fm. To schedule a face-to-face consultation, you can reach Lance and Connie at 604-538-8888. That's 604-538-8888. And visit them online at www.surreywhiterockhomes.com. Are you struggling with a dental or oral health issue? Dr. Norm Ickert from Ickert Dental Implant Center is committed to improving your quality of life with the very best in modern and advanced dentistry. You can catch Dr. Ickert on the Health Channel for the Healthy Smiles Oral Health Show here on localwebradio.fm and at the Ickert Dental Implant Center in Langley at 866-981-1381. That's 866-981-1381. Shopping for the lowest mortgage rate? Looking to refinance? Catch Jared Dreyer in the Mortgage Lab on localwebradio.fm. It's now time for more sound investing with Byron Stryloff. All right, we're back with Byron Stryloff, and we're discussing demographics. Now, Byron, before the break, we're discussing technology and inflation. The question I have is, if the technology is not new, does it still help the economy grow? Well, yes, it does, because what the generation that doesn't bring the technology, that brings the incremental improvements to them, what they also brought was that they leveraged the uh, their manufacturing ability to mass produce um, all these items at affordable prices and everybody or almost everybody, uh, you know, could participate. I mean, in, in the 20s, a car and a TV and a washing machine, well, those were real luxuries. But after, into the 50s, okay, um, with this increased productivity that all this technology created, it produced uh, it created a boom period, and that lasts until the new generation, the Bob Hope generation, reaches their peak spending in the late 60s. Mm-hmm. So they built the industries that could mass produce and, affo- and, and build all of these items at affordable prices that, that, uh, that certainly that everybody could use. And uh, as their spending drives these, their own new technology and industries, these products work their way into the economy. So as, as you may have noticed, we have two generations, um, but really one economic cycle. Hmm. So you have one individualistic generation that starts an economic revolution with, uh, with disruptive new technology, and that creates a boom, and that's our entrepreneurial e- economy. Then we have the next generation that improves and mass produces and, and makes all these items and, and, and consumer products affordable for everybody. And again, the improvements in this technology and the fact that it gets to everybody in the system, well, you really unleash the, the productivity. It's just like today when computers were new and only a few people had it, you know, it did increase productivity, but not as much as when you had a whole society that had a computer right. in front of them. Yeah. So, so if, if, we, if we take a look at some of the examples from, you know, what mass producing, you know, creates, uh, I remember my first cell phone. I mean, you know, it was $2,500. It was, it was heavy. It was in my car. <laughs> um, today, I mean, almost every child has a, has a cell phone because they basically give them away. Right. You know? So, so really we have a customized economy, we have a standardized economy, or which is followed by a standardized economy, and we have those, like I say, a 40-year generational cycle, an 80-year economic cycle, and they seem to complement um, uh, or actually support each other. And the last point I'll make on this is, 